So it's it's about that time for us to uh, to come upward. Uh, if you feel like it, stand, and uh, maybe a little bit of shifting of the weight side to side. You know, when we when we have these intrusions in our life that cause us stress and and all that we need to do and all that you know we're forecasting of what we must do to get back to our level of normal after you know our environmental disaster, it's good to sort of reconnect to our physical self. So shifting from side to side. Because then you have to sort of engage a little bit of that balance structure, a little bit of that awareness of weight. And then when I ask you to bring your weight even to left and right foot, you know, we pay a little more attention to that. We're like, oh, okay, now there I am in center. We start a little a slight turn of our shoulders because we're just checking out. Uh, and then if, if everything, if we get the all clear, we begin to make a, a slightly greater twist and turn. And, uh, and then we just keep making it a little bigger. But if we, if we run into something that uh, the body claims is, this isn't good, this isn't right, this doesn't feel right, then we should back away. We should lower our actions until uh, we reach that point where, okay, it's there, that problem is there, but we're not triggering an ouch. We're not triggering that. So things that are going to clear up with movement will happen within just a little bit of time. Uh, and things that are not going to clear up with movement are going to continue to, to be uncomfortable. And so we need to uh, modify our behavior around those uncomfortable areas so that we do not create harm. So just like in medicine here, our, our goal in yoga is to do no harm, right? So we go back and forth, we create those movements, and then if you're ready for it, we'll switch the movement to the up and down, that action, a different angle. And it's just like different positions, different postures in yoga. It creates a different force, a different action, a different engagement. It uses perhaps muscles that are not used in another position or posture or movement. So there's all this variety. And it tends to be a full body activity. So right now we could say that a lot of our body is feeling the effect of the arms just rising up and going down. Now, soften at the knees so they're a little bit bent. Rock your weight backward until you have to, you know, correct your balance and then come forward to your toes until, again, you have to correct your balance. And, and what we're looking for is crouching. So maybe I think about it and I crouch in anticipation of the balance I'm going to lose, but I do want to make it a little difficult. And, and so that's my theme in the class. I want things to be a little difficult. Not too difficult, not that I fail so much that I don't gain anything from it, that I'm just in the act of failing, but that I, I challenge myself. Put one foot forward. So the challenge now is to do this when the weight's distributed differently, like when we're on walk. So we go into our crouch, into our crouch. Other foot going forward, into our crouch. Back into our crouch. These are actions. Good. Okay. Now let's take special care of, of those ankle areas. Let the weight go to the inner edge and the weight go to the outer edge. So if I'm doing my yoga with an inappropriate arch, then the reflection of that inappropriate weight bearing is gonna travel upward into my ankle, into my knee, into my hip, into my back, into my neck. Everything is affected by the foundation. Balance across the ball of the foot, push out the heels. Now our arch is more uplifted, it's activated. Bring up your toes, pull your fingers back, stretch those little digits. Toes go down, fingers grip to the top. And then back and forth. When we do strong actions with our hands, we're likely to feel the effect of fatigue or tension, pain or achiness in the hands and a little bit of movement might be just what they need. When we don't move our toes, like when we put them in shoes all the time, uh, they have a hard time moving at all. Spread out fingers and toes, make them as wide as you can and then squeeze them together. And just keep working with it. Over time, we persistently, gently persistently pursue a physical objective, we'll get closer to it, to our desired outcome. Move your big toes towards each other. See if you can do that. Can you get the, that part of your foot active? And then as you press the big toe down, can you lift the small toes? And as you press the small toes, can you lift the big toe? And then biggest toe down, littlest toe down, can you lift and lower just the three center toes? And this creates a, a unity, mind all the way down to the feet. So we're going to stand with that activated arch, heels pressing out, hips are back. We're lifting the spine from the tailbone through the top of the neck. We're keeping the chin level. We adjust the shoulders a little back, a little down. And when we breathe in, we reach the arms out and up. 
That's our inhale. And then our exhale is down the midline, but we're going to keep making different movements. We're going to inhale up the midline and exhale out. Take it to a side, breathe in and out. We take it to the other side, inhale and out. And so all of that's moving areas. So again, inhale, keep changing it up. And the neck and the upper back and the shoulders and even the lower back, begin to feel it, breathing in and out. So movement is more than just one muscle. Inhale, it's partnership, it's stability. Everything affects everything else. Almost no isolation at all. Lift up the arms. Now, length of the spine really helps us to so lift the chest, but make it eat a little bit more. Lift the ribs, lift the arms. So we get a full one-sided stretch, inhaling. And then exhale, we release that. We, we lift the spine, we lift the ribs, we lift the arm. It takes a lot to get our full true length. Inhaling, and we exhale again. Center lift, side lift, arm reach, inhale. Exhale, release. Lift the center, lift the side, lift the arm, and stretch, and inhale. And exhale, we're going to take our hands, we're going to interlock the fingers, press out the palms. We're going to lift the chest and the arms up, so we keep that uplift as we now spiral from the legs, through the chest, through the arms, inhaling, lifting, exhaling, releasing. And then we uplift again, we make that length, we spiral in the other direction, we take a deep breath. And then exhale, we release that. And then we're going to lift the chest and lift the arms, and instead of spiraling, we're going to continue to lengthen as we slowly arch back to a pleasant feeling position. Inhale, and then exhale, throw those arms down. Bring your chest up, squeeze together the shoulder blades, reaching the arms back, exhale. And then bring the shoulders forward, widen the space between the shoulder blades, deep inhale. And we're going to reach and squeeze back and exhale. Shoulders forward, inhale. And once more, reach and squeeze back and exhale. We're just going to let those arms come apart. All right. So now, step out uh, your feet a little bit like a mat distance wide. And start your turn again. Just, you're going to feel... Maybe a little different. We haven't done much warm-up, but we're progressing. We're progressing with it. All right, now we're going to isolate. We're going to uplift. We're going to make it a little harder because we're only going to turn the shoulders. We're not going to turn the hips. And there's a limitation when you isolate. But what we're doing is we're engaging deeper muscles. It's very important to know that from surface to deep, there are muscle layers. Now, uplift, and it is the pelvis that we want to move independent of the upper chest. Good. Okay, now we want the pelvis to stay still, so we're going to push our feet and our knees out. We're going to keep that happening. Pull in your core with your chest lifted, lower your shoulders, and put your hand on one leg pushing. And as you tilt, push into it so you don't collapse. Keep the pelvis in the center, lift the ribs, lift the arm, stretch it up and inhale. Exhaling, lift all the way up and out. And then press out the feet again, pull in the core, chest up, shoulders down. Hand of the leg, we begin the tilt, we lift the ribs, we lift the arm, we stretch upward, deep inhale. And then exhale, we lift ourselves up and all the way out. Okay, now we're going to make a nice wide stance. Keep that arch in your foot. And uplifting the chest, we bend the knees until the hands rest on the knees. And then very slowly we reach across. And we're feeling, we're feeling shoulders and ribs and low back and pelvis and inner thigh and other areas. We're just breathing, we're just scouting. Come out and we scout the other way. We said, what is there to feel? What is there? We're not being hard or harsh. And we're going to do it again. We're going to go across. And this time we're going to hold position and take the deepest breath we can to spread the ribs out wider. And we'll feel different when we do that exhaling center. And we go across. And again, that deepest breath we can. And then exhaling, coming to center. Now at center, I want you to shift your weight to one side. So one leg goes straight. That's our target, the inner thigh. Now we could stay high and do it just like this, but we can come to whatever distance down with both the arms and the hips that you would like to create so that you feel that inner thigh stretch just made just for you. And then we're going to go to the other side and you can stay up high. 
or you can go lower, whatever, whatever distance seems like, yeah, that's just exactly the stretch I need right now. And we're going to do it again. You switch back to that first side. And again, then you just, you sort of, it's like you're tailoring this to you. Make it fit just right. And then to the other side, just make it just right. And then we're coming to center. Now at center, keep a little bend of the knees and lift the hips and let the head and the arms hang. You could just keep the elbows on the knees if that was more comfortable. But if you can let the arms hang and even the head hang, you'll get more decompression of your spine. Bend the knees so the hamstring stretch you're feeling is controllable. Breathe deep, we're just trying to relax. Now we're going to put one hand down and bring the other shoulder toward our back. Press out the feet for more stability. Chest away from hips for more spine length. Arm reaching up for a little more twist. Take a deep breath. And then on exhale, we're going to switch sides. So the shoulder comes up, the feet press out, the chest reaches away from hips, the arm can stretch up. Inhale. Exhale, come on back to center now. Put your hands back up on those knees and once again, reach across. We're releasing a little more. Every time we do this, we're just progressing through, getting some muscles to release and we find other muscles that then need to release. Now we're coming back to center and I want us to come up a bit, putting the heel of the palm in the crease of the leg and shrugging the shoulders toward the head. Then we tilt forward a little. On one side, you're, you're going to straighten the arm more than it is. It may not get completely straight. We're lengthening the spine. Let's take a deep breath. Exhale, that elbow bends. And now the other side, we begin to press. We begin to work to lengthen the spine. We take a deep breath. Exhale, the elbow bends. And now both sides, we push. We're tractioning our spine, making it nice and long. Let's take a deep breath. Exhaling, bend the elbows, bend the knees. And come up out of that. Okay. Now we have reached the point of our progression that we're ready for some salutes. But we're still going to need to modify. We're still going to need to make things fit us, tailoring all the actions, maybe eliminating things, maybe adding one more, because it's you, you're going to make the decision on how intense these things are. So let's start with the activated arch of our foot, hips back, spine lifting up and shoulders back and down and the chin level. Breathe in, lift your arms. Beginning your exhale, grab your elbows and bend your knees and bring the chest down. And maybe you just let the elbows rest on the knees and lift the hips there. Or maybe you let the arms slide off the legs. The lift of the hips, the bend of the knees, adjust the hamstring stretch, make it nice. Sway back and forth across and feel the reaction of your hamstrings to that slight movement as you let the head and the arms hang if you can, breathing deeply. And then on this exhale, place your hands, step your right foot back into lunge, left knee is over the ankle. Bring your right hip up, adjust the balance into the ball of your right foot and the heel reaches back to stretch your calf and the chest pulls forward to lengthen your spine. The left foot holds its arch, and we're using a light pressure to the hands, or for a greater intensity, we have the option of arms, one or both, reaching forward. Deep inhale, and then on exhale, hands go flat, and we step back in a plank. Abs pull in tight as we lengthen, the chest going forward and the hips and heels stretching back. Deep inhale, exhaling softly, lower down the knees, and pull your hips back toward your heels, and you can bring your elbows and even your forehead down. And from this position, Sway from side to side. You'll feel the reaction in the shoulders, in the neck, possibly in the legs too, just wherever you feel it, just fine, breathing deeply. But we can modify this. We can bring the shoulders over those elbows and sway then the hips side to side, and that's going to release some tension from the back. And you can just keep doing that, or you can bring your knees together and pivot the feet from side to side, to add even a little bit more engagement, breathing deeply. Now in the center, rest the top of the foot down, press your hands evenly, and come forward to upward dog. The shoulders traveling forward to the wrist, the collarbones lifting as we sink down the hips. Press the hands and the top of the foot evenly down and lift the collarbones up. Inhale. And then exhale, we're moving back to downward dog. So lift up the hips and push the chest toward the thighs. The palms should be flattening evenly, the thumb pulling toward the feet and the head between the arms. Now balance on the ball of the foot and lift up your heels. Bend your knees and lift up your hips. And then just keep pushing your chest toward your thighs, but pull those shoulders a bit toward the hips so that your neck is less tense. Breathing deeply. You can also paddle your heels down and up. Deep breaths. 
Now on this next exhale, we're stepping right foot forward. So we're going to lunge, but the left knee can come down at any time and help you bring that right ankle forward so the shin is perpendicular. Lift up the left hip, balance the ball of the foot. Heel reaches back, chest and shoulders pull forward. Right foot's holding active arch. Light pressure in the hands or arms forward. Deep inhale. And on exhale, we step forward. Feet hip distance. Press down into the heels and bend your knees more. Pull in your belly and from the squat position, heels pressing. Inhale, lift up. And exhale. Our second round. Inhale up. Exhale, grab the elbows, bend the knees, chest coming down. Now this time the elbows are going to rest against the shins and we're going to pull the shoulders toward our hips to release that neck tension. We'll press into the legs as well to move the ribs toward the knees and lengthen the spine. And let's add feet and knees pressing outward and breathing into the upper back. And we'll do that for another full deep breath. And then exhaling, placing hands. Now it's left foot stepping back as lunge. And then side angle. So the left heel goes down, the left shoulder goes up, and the right elbow comes up on the knee. We're going to pull the hips into the center of the mat and move the right knee toward the right edge of the mat as we lengthen the right side by moving the shoulder away from the hip. We want to feel the active arch in both feet. And if you want, the left arm can be brought behind the back to lift that shoulder up even higher. And if you want, the right arm can be brought forward for more intensity. Take a deep breath. Exhaling, bring the hands flat, press them evenly. Let's step back and plank. Hands pulled in tight as we lengthen chest forward, hips and heels back. Inhale. Exhaling, softly lower down the knees, hips back toward heels until those elbows can come softly down. Now walk your right hand forward. You, you want to pull the ribs a little past the knee. So when I ask you to sway over to the right, you're able to bow the ribs outward. If you want, you can pull back a little bit to increase the stretch, but you'll feel stretch especially now as we breathe into the right side. Every inhale, expanding the right side of the chest so that the air pulls more into the lungs and the lungs themselves will stretch as well as the structure that is involved with that rib cage and the muscles that are in between the ribs, those intercostals, they're gonna contract. It's all gonna add up to equaling a nice deep breath. Exhaling chest to center, hands even. Now the left hand, walk it forward, palm goes flat and then you sway over to the left. And then you start to breathe. You can pull back a little bit for more stretch if you want. And it is a contrast. One side can definitely be tighter than the other side. So breathe in. Just get all of this activated and all of this stretching. So deep breath will be easier. And then on exhale, chest to center, hands even. Now we're slowly coming forward to upward dog. Shoulders travel forward to the wrist. Collarbones lift as we sink down the hips. The hand and top, the foot pressure is even. Lift up the collarbones and inhale. And then exhaling, we move back to downward dog. So lift hips and push the chest toward the thighs. Those palms are evenly flat. Head between the arms, get the balance on the ball of the foot and lift your heels. Bend your knees and lift your hips. And keep pushing your chest toward your thighs. But let's activate those shoulders for more stability. We start by pulling the shoulders steadily toward the hips. There's our lat muscle helping us out. And then we push our hands and our elbows toward each other to bring action into the pectorals. And then we add to that this widening of shoulder blades, which is serratus anterior, the very muscle structures that do the best in stabilizing us. While we keep the hips lifted and we keep those shoulders active, we can paddle those heels down and up. And we'll take another deep breath. And on this exhale, now we'll step left foot forward, full lunge. And remember, right knee can come down if you want. Side angle, right heel down, right shoulder up, left elbow up on the knee. Hips into the middle of the mat, left knee moving toward the left edge, and we lengthen left side, shoulder away from the hip. We want to feel activation in the arches. Right arm could go behind our back if we want, and left arm can go forward if we like. Deep inhale, exhale, we step forward, feet hip distance. Push down the heels and bend the knees, belly tight. And inhale, lifting up, and exhale. One more round of it. Inhale up. Exhale, grab the elbows, bend the knees, chest coming down. Now we're just going to lift the hips, either elbows stay on the knees or the head and the arms hang because our focus is what's happening in the feet. So create your active arch, heels slightly pushing away, lift your toes up, and then press not only the heels, but the knees away from each other to activate this outer hip area strongly. Now, the more you let the head and the arms hang, the more you decompress not just the spine, 
but the structure of the pelvis. So keep those legs pressing out or like you're trying to stretch apart the earth. Breathe in nice and deep. And on this next exhale, hands placed, right foot steps back and lunge, right knee comes all the way down. We're making a low lunge. Let the top of the foot rest down. And here's our twist. Even pressure to the right hand and the left hand on the knee. Now you're welcome just to twist straight across, but if you want a little more intensity, lift the hips to whatever height, twist across, and then sink them all the way down. Tighten up your right seat muscle, lengthen on the right side, breathe into the right side deeply. And then on exhale, placing hands, step back in plank. Abs pulling in tight as we lengthen chest forward and hips and heels back, inhale. Exhale, softly lower down the knees, hips back toward the heels and the elbows are down. Now, we're gonna push into the palms nice and firm. We're gonna lift those elbows all the way up and we're gonna squeeze together the shoulder blades. So there's our target. The muscle between the shoulder blade is a rhomboids and we are making it contract, it's squeezing together. Let's breathe into the belly as we keep that strong contraction. And on our next exhale, we're gonna put our elbows down, but not only just put them down, we're gonna press the elbows as straight down into the ground as we can. We're gonna lift our spine as straight up as we can. And those two things together, elbows pressing down, spine lifting up between the shoulder blades, shoulder blades getting wider, that serratus anterior, the, the muscle that helps control the rhomboids. And so we're breathing into that upper back space. And on the next exhale, we start to come slowly forward to upward dog. The shoulders travel forward to the wrist. The collarbones lift as we sink down the hips. Press the hands and the top of the foot evenly. Lift your collarbones up. Inhale. And then exhaling back into downward dog. Lift hips and push your chest toward your thighs. Palms are evenly flat. Balance on the ball of the foot. Lift the heels. Bend your knees and lift your hips. Chest pushing toward your thighs. Now pull the shoulders toward the hips. Press the hands and elbows toward each other. Make it wide between the shoulder blades. And you could just be paddling the heels up and down, but you could also shift weight to the left foot, lifting the right foot up, or even stretching that right leg all the way up. Deep inhale. Exhaling, right foot comes down. Shifting to the right, left foot can come up or stretch the left leg all the way up. Inhale. Exhaling, left foot comes down. And now right foot forward and lunge, left knee down, but you can bring the left knee down first if you wanted to. Press the top of the left foot and here comes our twist. Even pressure on the left hand, right hand to the knee. So either twist straight across or lift the hips up, twist and sink the hips down. Tighten the left seat muscle, lengthen the left side, breathe into the left side deeply. And then on exhale, we step forward, feet to distance. Press down into the heels and bend the knees more. Belly tight and from the squat. Heels pressing. Inhale, lift up. And exhale. All right. Well done. And to finish off our warm-up, we want to lengthen our spines. We want to do something with this warmth immediately. Take the feet wide. Activate your arches. Lengthen. Shoulders up toward the ears. Bend the knees a little so you got more of a crease line in the pelvis. And put the heel of the palm there as you tilt. Now on your right side, do your best to begin to straighten that elbow. It's okay if it still won't go completely straight. Just take a deep breath with that nice long spine. Exhale, let the elbow bend. Now the left side. We begin to pressure, we begin to straighten. We take a deep inhale. Exhale, the elbow bends. And now both sides. We push, we get both arms to become more straight. We take a deep inhale. Exhaling, bend at the elbows, bend at the knees. Bring ourselves up. All right, good. Now there are quite a few different poses in yoga that uh, represent uh, sort of bending backward, back bending kind of poses. And uh, and one of the problems with it is that, uh, you know, we say, oh, I'm gonna bend, I'm gonna arch backward, but we never think I'm gonna elongate, I'm gonna elongate my spine to create this. And it's not just only the spine that has this issue. It is especially true that the front of our hip tightness can limit our ability to arch effectively. In fact, we'll arch only with the back in back bend like positions and not with the leg. So I want to take us through a little bit of a, of a, a work through to try and get a little bit of freedom here in the front of our hip and then elongating the spine as well for an arch. So we're gonna actually start with that low lunge position, okay? So what I'm gonna have us do is we're gonna come down 
into a tabletop. And we're going to uh, place ourselves with our right leg forward and our left leg stretched back into a full lunge. Now, if you are particularly tight, then a couple of blocks can really help you. So if I went in and I had a couple of blocks here, I might feel more comfortable in my full lunge. I wouldn't have to bring my hands as close to the floor, so blocks are not. Now, um, what I'm gonna have us do is we're actually gonna come a little forward. We're gonna take weight onto our arms, so the blocks will be there if you want. And it, it, you can tell already that it is your left hip that is stretching. You know, you're probably going to feel something in the right hip, too. Now, what I'd like us to do is to bring the leg a little bit forward, but to, with the left leg, act like you're going to move it backward. You can rest the top of the foot if you want. Move it like you're pushing the left leg back behind you and tighten up that left seat muscle. And just breathe in. Now, if you wanted more, you just bend that left knee. So, oh, oh, and then, yeah, we're feeling it. But don't make it miserable. Now we're gonna, we're gonna straighten that leg. We're gonna take a little bit of pressure off of it by just simply moving backward. Now the blocks can help you, you can sort of drag them with you and, uh, and just come back until you've got a little bit of stretch in the hamstring area. Your chest is bent down and so you're just in this nice front of, or your back of the leg, front leg, right leg in this case, stretching. And then we're gonna come forward again. And so this time we'll do it with the blocks. I'm coming forward. As I begin to feel this left leg, the, uh, the front of the hip stretching, I move my left knee backward. I mean, I act like I'm going to, it doesn't really move. And then only if I wanted to would I bend my left knee. And we would feel, we would feel that stretch. And then we let the leg go back and then we push ourselves slowly back, sort of a little bowing pose here. If you wanted to, you could pull the front of the right foot backward and your calf muscle would be invited to stretch too. Just breathe deeply. And then one more time, we're going to go forward. And we push the left knee backward. We bend the left knee a little bit and we breathe. And then one more time, we're going to go backward. And we let the front of the right foot pull back if we want. Okay. So now move your right leg back. And for just a little bit, you can, you can spread the knees wider if you want. We're going to sink back with the arms forward, a bit of a child pose. I'm going to sway side to side. And you're going to feel all sorts of things in shoulders, sure. And maybe there's a little bit of difference in the left and the right leg. So the left leg is the one that stretched the front of the hip. Now, from this position, we're going to come all the way flat. We're going to leave the arms beside us. And so now we've got the front of the hip open. Now we're going to open up our back a little bit in the low cobra. And so we're going to push the elbows down and pull our chest forward. Now that pelvis should stay pressed down. And then we're going to lift our chest slowly upward. And the more we pull forward, the less jamming there will be. So don't lift any higher than you want. You can come down any time. But if you were comfortable, you can bend your knees. Now, maybe the left side feels different than the right side, not just the front of the hip, but maybe the back. And then we're going to let the legs straighten out if we chose to bend them, and we're going to come all the way down. We're going to repeat this a couple of times. And then we pull forward, push down the pelvis, and then lift your spine a bit upward. And then if you want to add more, you bend the knees. You try and bring those heels toward the seat muscle. I know it's hard to see what's happening back there, and you notice. It's the left side a little looser. Maybe so. And then we let that come Beat knees unbend and the chest come down. And then one more time, we pull forward, we push the pelvis down and we lift the chest. And if you just wanted to leave it, it's only lifting the chest, that's fine. But if you wanted to add the bend of the knees, there we go. So we see how we feel in the back and the pelvis in the front of the leg. And then we're gonna push onto those elbows and move ourselves back again into this very brief Child pose, relieve tension. But now as we come up, we're gonna, we're gonna change which leg is in the forward position. So we're gonna start off with that left leg forward and the right leg behind us. So we switch sides, the right leg goes into the lunge. And again, you can use those blocks as you want, but we're gonna let the knee come down, the top of the foot rest. And then we're going to move a bit forward until we're feeling stretch in the front of that left hip. 
So you can have blocks or not. Push the left leg backward, tighten up the left seat muscle, and if you want, slowly bend the left knee the amount that it takes to make a stretch. Just breathing deeply. It's gonna be tighter or looser one side versus the other. The leg goes straight, and then we move backward until the left leg is stretching a bit, and then we pull the front of the left foot back if we want these little additions. Breathing deeply. And then we come forward again. This time I'll do it with the blocks to help me so you can see. I come forward, my hip, right hip sinking down. I push the right knee backward. I bend the right knee if I want more. Deep inhale. And then exhale, right leg goes straight and we push ourselves backward just to the right amount. And there's no particular prescription of how far back to go. Pull the left foot backward if you like. And then once again, we come forward, the hip sinks, we push the knee back, we tighten the seat muscle, we bend the knee. And then exhaling, we straighten the leg and then we push ourselves backward, the left leg a little straighter, we pull the left foot back, deep inhale. And then now we just move the left leg back we stretch the arms forward. We go into a little bit of a child pose. The elbows forward. We're just swaying side to side. We're feeling all sorts of things. Maybe a little different on the left and the right. And now we're going to come forward and stretch our legs backwards until we're face down. We're going to place our forearms right next to us. And we start to pull the chest forward. We make that a constant action. We push down the pelvis and then we just lift our chest up. There's no particular height to lift to. Just find a posture that you're not feeling jammed. And then very slowly, if you like, bend your knees. Now maybe things feel a little more even. Or maybe there's still tightness on one side versus the other. We straighten the legs. We come down. You gotta keep breathing. Don't hold your breath. We'll do it again. We pull forward. We push the pelvis down. We Arch the chest up, low cobra, and then we bend our knees slowly. We take a deep breath. Exhale, the legs come down. And then again, push the pelvis down, pull forward, and arch the chest up, bend the knees, inhale. And then exhale, we release. Now, this is a posture, this is a position. What we're getting towards is a, a lot like a pose. It's called bow, B-O-W, bow pose. And uh, we can try it a little bit. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna reach my left arm backward. I'm gonna keep my right arm where it is right now. I'm gonna see if I can bend my left knee enough to, to catch hold of the ankle. Now, um, what we would do with this is that we would lift the chest a little bit. I've got my right arm helping me. I would lift the left leg a little bit. Now that's a half bow and you might feel too much pressure right here. We'll try the other side. The left arm is going to go down. I'm going to take my right arm backward. I'm going to see if I can contact the ankle. And obviously if you cannot reach the foot, then you're not going to go into this bow pose. That's okay. We, uh, we lift the chest up a little bit and we lift the leg up a little bit and there is half bow pose. You can see, yeah, that's, a, that's just a traditional pose in yoga. Now, the full tradition is for both arms to reach backward. And we're just seeing where we are on the continuum. We bend the legs and of course, obviously, if I cannot grab hold of anything, then I cannot go further. But we push down the pelvis, we lift the shoulders, we lift the hips a little bit. And then we sink that back down and we put the arms forward. Now I, I show you that pose and I want you to push back and come into the child pose immediately. I show you that pose because we need to know where we are in life. And yoga poses are brilliant at showing us where we don't have enough flexibility and where we don't have enough strength, which are all often a combination of things. So your flexibility and your strength, they parallel each other. So the stronger you are, the more flexible you can become. And so we're just stretching back like this. We're just feeling this release. And so I don't belabor that harder pose, the bow pose. We're going to come up and we're going to sit. I don't belabor that pose because we did plenty, and we're going to do more in class that are going to help us with this goal to be strong and flexible. But I don't bring you to a more traditional pose when a simplification of the actions will give us more. And so probably you got more out of the 
isolated hip stretch, more out of the cobra, more out of bending the knees while you're in the low cobra, then you might have gotten out of that bow pose. But, you know, if you're more advanced, you, you felt the bow as well, and it, it loosened you up, made you ready for it. So I, I'm, I'm using these blocks since I have them available. I'm going to use them, and I'm going to sit my hips up on them. And you can sit your hips up. You can sit on the ground. Uh, blocks are great for sitting on. So are bolsters, and so are couch cushions. So I bet you got something. Um, the legs now are for us to just, you know, you might want your legs stretched out. Uh, you might want your legs folded and lifting the hips up allows a lot of different postures of the legs. So you're going to choose the one that's most comfortable to you, just like me choosing mine. But don't have one leg doing something completely opposite the other. That tends to create problems in the pelvis. Now, once we're seated in our desired position, we're going to uplift our chest. And we're going to start rolling one shoulder and the other, which is our, our specific shoulder warm up. So we roll one way. And then we roll the other way. And you're gonna hear all sorts of crickles and crackles in the neck. And then we're gonna turn the arms in and out. Now this is, uh, this is us warming up, but it's also us getting information that might alter our lesson plan. In other words, you might say, well, I got something I gotta avoid in that shoulder and that neck area. And so that's perfectly fine. Now, uh, I often focus on the arms being forward, but I don't often focus on uh, the arms going backward. And that's life too. Life does a lot more forward and a lot less backward. So we're gonna focus on going backward right now. Have your arms just, just hanging down, either the palms facing the floor or facing the back of the body. I want you to pull the chest up and lower your shoulders down. And it's like we're trying to push something back behind us. We keep the chin level and we just gradually move the arms back. You can lower one side or the other and you're just going to hang out here for a couple of breaths. Imagine your spine were uplifting while you were holding this. Your chin was staying level. You're neither crouched forward nor arched back. Take another deep breath and then exhale and let it go. And, and if you're like me, that was surprisingly tight. It was surprisingly stretchy, but it didn't go back very far. Now we're going to change We're going to alter the rotation of the arms. We're going to turn the palms to definitely face either forward or upward. And we're going to lift the chest and lower the shoulders. And then very slowly, we're going to pull the arms backward. And you can keep the shoulders one side lower than the other. And you just pull back to kind of an even feel, although one arm might be further back than the other arm. The elbows can be more straight or a little bit more bent. And we're just keeping the chin level, the spine uplifted for a couple of breaths. And so I want you to take another deep inhale. And then exhale. <coughs> oh, sneezing is optional. <laughs> Let that go. Okay. Now, uh, so that is like, it's tight. All right. Now, what I'm going to have us do, I'm going to turn sideways so you can sort of see what I'm going to ask you to do. It's about creating a stretch, and you've got to be your own friend in this, okay? You cannot do this in a hard or harsh way. So as you sit, and we, we had our arms sort of back a little bit, we're going to lift the chest, and I'm just going to take one arm, and I'm just going to bring it into the small of my back, and so I'll turn so that you can even see that. Okay. So i got my, my arm right there. I'm going to take my other hand, and maybe I can only grab hold of a finger, but I bet you if you pulled it a little bit, you can get a little closer across, maybe maybe desirably holding the wrist, but maybe you're just, you know, holding hands with yourself. And what I'd like you to do is just gently, 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 chest up, shoulders down, pull that arm pleasantly across, and just swing the elbow a little bit toward that other side. So if this is your right arm, you're swinging your arm to the left. If it's your left arm, you're swinging to the right. So we just, you know, we bring it across, and then we lift our head, and then we just ever, ever, ever so lightly lean the head. Now, all of this I'm creating for myself is like, okay, I feel the stretch, but it's not mean. This is not, you know, my sibling putting my arm behind my back when we were children. It's reasonable. <laughs> like, unlike siblings. And then we just lift that relax, and it's like, oh. All right, so don't overstretch. Don't overstretch. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to do the other side. So the chest is up, the shoulders are down. I'm going to bring that arm behind me, and I'm just going to see what can I get hold of. Is it only the fingers? Is it I'm holding hands? Am I holding the wrist? Chest up, shoulders down. I'm just going to pull this arm back across a little bit, and then I'm going to reach that elbow toward the other side a little bit, keeping the chest lifted. I'm just going to lean my head away a little bit, and all of that is like you are the tailor of the stretch. Do not you don't get more out of making it more sensational. You get more out of finding the point where your body feels a stretch, but can still relax into it. Okay, so now we're going to release that. All right, I'll turn because I feel weird my back to you. All right, so um, 
we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. So the chest is up, the shoulders are down. Now I'm just taking, okay, I'm gonna take my right arm and I'm gonna place it in the small of my back. And I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna find something to hold on to, okay? And I'm gonna pull the arm a little more toward my left. And then I'm gonna swing my elbow, my right elbow a little toward the left. And then here's the add-on, chest up, shoulders down. I can straighten my arms back away from my body if it seems like that would be reasonable. Don't do anything unreasonable. Take a deep inhale, exhale, bending those elbows, returning to center, releasing the arms. So again, every little step up is an option, but it might not be the option that you should take. All right, now I'm gonna do the other side. So the left arm's gonna come into my back. My right hand's gonna reach around, grab something. I'm gonna pull it over toward my right side. I'm gonna swing my left elbow a little toward the right. And I might stop right there. And then I'm gonna maybe straighten my arms backwards. Maybe not. We'll take a deep breath in. And then we exhale and we just release that. And it's like, oh. okay, very good. I want you to pull hand back toward the hip. I want you to push the other side across. And then I want you to lift your head. And the arms are on one side of your body. I want to lift, lift the head and turn your head and look to the other side, away from where your hands are. And then release. Hand pulls back. The other arm crosses the body. Chest is up. I lift my head up, I turn, I look away from where my hands are. And then we'll release. Now this time I'm gonna bring my hand up a little higher. I'm gonna push across a little higher. I'm gonna lift my head. I'm gonna look away from where those hands are. Deep inhale, exhale, let it go. I'm gonna pull my hand up a little higher. I'm gonna push my arm across a little higher. I'm gonna lift my head and turn away. We'll take a deep breath. We exhale, we let it go. I'm gonna pull my hand up really high. I'm gonna push my arm up really high. I'm gonna lift my head, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna look away, deep breath. We exhale, we let it go. I'm gonna pull my hand up as high as I can get it. I'm gonna push my arm up really high. I'm gonna lift my head. I'm gonna look away from those hands. Take a deep breath. Exhale and we let it go. Oh, all right, very good. All right, there's a little more I want us to do. We're gonna come out of the seated position. And I wanna create a release in the hips. Um, this is often done in a face down position. It's called king of pigeon, but I'm gonna have us do a reclined king of pigeon in order to open the hip without creating issues, irritation in the knee. So we're gonna come onto our back. All right, so as we were climbing onto our back, first of all, we wanna move the shoulders away from the head so that we continue this nice release work we began in our neck. And this is gonna be really nice. So. While we're doing other things, our neck will relax and the chin's pretty much pointed upward. Now to get my body accustomed to uh, what's going on and to relieve some of the tension of the other poses that we did, I'm just gonna bring one knee in toward my chest and just pull it in very gently, very slowly, but pretty, you know, it's like I'm trying to squish myself with my leg right there. Just a little, little bit of stretch there, breathing. And then I'm gonna let that leg go and I'm gonna do the other side. I'm just gonna pull that leg and I'm gonna bring it toward my chest. I'm just gonna sort of squish myself with my leg, breathing. And then we're gonna let it go. Okay, now, this is my left leg I'm bringing in toward my chest this time. Okay, now once I have the leg in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna bring the knee a little off to the side and bring my ankle towards me. Now that I'm doing on my own. That gives me an idea of whether I can move it at all. I'm gonna take my, uh, my left elbow area toward my left knee, but maybe I'm only gonna be able to get my hand there, but it would be great if I could just sort of fold my elbow around it. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm not gonna be mean, I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna see, can I grab hold of my right, or my left ankle, that's my left ankle, right hand to left ankle. And I'm gonna gently, 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 gently bring it toward, that ankle toward my right hip, just a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm just sort of pulling the leg slightly across. Now it's so important that we do not irritate our left knee. 
And to help with that, I'm going to make my left foot flatten out. So from the shin down to the ankle to the bottom of the foot, it's almost like I'm standing on that foot. That's the same posture I would be in. And that helps me, helps prevent me from twisting my knee. Now, once I'm in a comfortable position like this, and the leg might be more here, but once I'm in a comfortable position, I'm going to straighten out my right leg. I'm going to reach my right ankle away and do my best to push the back of my right knee down. And this has made a lot of difference in my body. Even my left leg is feeling the stretch more. Now, some of you are a little more flexible, okay? And it's easy to bring that left knee toward your left shoulder. It's easy to wrap your elbow around. It would be possible for you to, to uh, pull this right leg a little more toward your shoulder. Not everyone's like that, and there should be no case where your, your left knee is upset by this. Don't forget about your right leg. No matter what you do with the left leg, don't forget that you're reaching your right leg away from you and pressing your right leg down. Now, you might literally just have your leg in because there's no rotation possible. Or you may be, you know, you might have this, this foot just, you know, like hugging it like a baby. Right leg reaching away. This is the king of pigeon pose. All right, so you're you're keeping this uh, this right foot flat and in the angle it would be in if you were standing on that foot. And we're hopefully feeling a little stretch in that left hip. And if we keep pushing the right knee down and keep reaching the right leg away, we will be feeling a little bit of opening in the front of that right hip. Now we'll just take another deep breath. And then we're going to exhale. I'm going to let the left leg go. We're going to let it come down. Okay, so remember, no irritation to the knee. Right leg, right leg time. We're going to bring the right leg in. It's going to be different than the left leg, guaranteed. So we bring the leg in, and we're just going to see, can we turn the leg so the knee is more off to the side and the foot is more toward the midline? Now, maybe we're just only going to be able to just very, very gently hold it like that. Or maybe we can bring our right elbow up and sort of loop it around that knee, and maybe we can pull the left foot in. But remember, the foot should be flat and the shin uh, as if I'm standing on that, so I'm not letting the, the leg twist or turn. I'm not going with the goal of, yeah, I'm gonna put this heel on my, my shoulder there. Uh, nope, so we get comfy, we get our level of comfy, and then the left leg stretches out, press the back of the left knee down, reach the left leg away. You know, you can go deeper into the pose. If your right knee is not unhappy, Reach the leg away, press the back of the left knee down. Don't make, don't think, oh, I need to do this because if my knee is unhappy, it needs more of this. No, if your knee is unhappy, it needs less of this. Don't irritate your leg. Don't irritate your knee. Just do the amount that feels like a reasonable amount. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to binge on this. We want to have a light meal of it. Don't forget about the left leg. It's reaching away. The back of the left knee is pressing down because even though the right hip is probably very much in your mind, um, your left leg is part of you too. And take another deep breath. And then exhaling, we're going to release and we're going to bring both of our feet into a bent knee position. Now, widen out the legs, stretch out your arms. I want you to rock the knees softly side to side. Now, if you have a wide enough position of your feet and your knees, then when you rock to the right, the left side of the pelvis will be allowed to lift upward. And when you rock to the left, the right side of the pelvis will be allowed to lift upward. And this is really good because we're going to turn this into an entire body stretch. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, I'm going to bring my arms instead of out to the side, more toward my head. Maybe it's still a nice wide Y shape, or maybe it's getting even narrower and completely in line with my head. Um, I'm going to rock my legs toward the right side, and I'm going to reach my left knee a little more away. I'm going to reach my left wrist a little more away from the body so that I'm feeling this stretch. It's going from the knee area on my left into the pelvis, into the side of the waist, into the shoulder line. But, you know, it's very possible that you feel one area pretty strong. And so limit it to the strong area's comfort. Take a deep breath and bring your knees up. Now I'm going to take myself toward the other side. The, uh, the legs going left, the right side of the pelvis lifting up. And I'm starting to reach my right knee away. And I'm starting to reach my right wrist away. And I'm just doing that to the point where whatever's the strongest sensation is limited to what feels really good. 
but I feel it from the front of my knee into the thigh, into the front of the pelvis, into the side of the waist, into the shoulder. I feel a little into my fingers too. Take a deep breath and then release. Now you can, you can take the arms out of that anytime you want. You can rock back and forth whatever amount that you need. But we can also take this into a little bit different. I'm going to bring my, uh, my feet and knees really close together. In fact, I'm going to cross my right knee over my left. It's like a really tight knee to knee cross. And I'm going to start the rocking back and forth, leaving my left foot somewhat on the ground, mostly on the ball of the foot and the toes, not the heel. And as I rock side to side, the binding of my right leg over the left has created this increase of movement through the pelvis and the low back. And right now I'm starting it off with my, my legs absorbing leg weight, because remember about half our body weight is in our legs, so we don't just immediately want to pull the legs into the chest. We want to start off right here. Start off right here. Okay. Now, if things are going well and I want to take my feet away from the floor, I can continue, but I've got to keep my shoulders down. I can't just flop over to one side or the other. And so I just go side to side. And this, of course, is increased because now I've got the weight of my legs, about half my body weight, being sort of rocked from side to side. And it's a great release. It's a little bit of a hip stretch. Great. Okay. I'm going to come to center. I'm going to put the legs down and uncross them. Now I'm going to cross my left knee over the right. I'm going to start with the left, uh, the right foot remaining down as I rock from side to side. And the bind is now on the opposite side. And we're feeling the pull across the pelvis into the hips, into the back. You'll feel it where you're tight. As so we just go back and forth across like this. And we limit the action to what produces a pleasant stretch. So keeping the foot down is always an option. But if you wanted to, in the middle, you could bring the legs away from the floor and start to rock side to side. Just keep your shoulders down all the time. Because we're trying to isolate to just one area. We don't just want to flop. It's not that somebody's going to give us a ribbon if we go further to the left or right. We're just trying to find what is the comfortable rotation amount. Where are we feeling the best with this? So back and forth we go. And that is great. And then we're going to come to center and we're going to uncross. All right. Now, feet are down. Bring your heels closer to your seat muscles. Arms are still outward. If your shoulders have climbed toward your head, walk them away a little bit. And I want you to flatten your back and arch your back. Pelvic tilt. Good time to flatten the back is when you're exhaling. Good time to arch your back is when you're inhaling. Now, you can keep it like this or you can go a little further. Push down on the heels and tighten your seat muscles. As you flatten the back, reach your knees toward your toes and you will roll your spine up a little bit. But don't, don't think about lifting too high. When you're up, take a deep breath in. And when you're ready, you exhale and you roll your spine back down again. It's a rolling bridge, but a very low bridge. Inhale with your back arch. I always use both pieces of this. Exhale, rolling the back, knees reaching toward the toes, heels pressing down, seat muscles active. Inhale and push the heels down even more. Exhale, roll your back down. You're the orchestration of this. You're deciding how, you know, conduct it or decide how high you lift. Back arching, inhale. Back flattening, rolling knees toward toes. So when I exhale, I'm either rolling up or rolling down. I inhale at the top. I exhale, I roll myself back down again. It's a little bit of a rolling bridge. Very nice. We're doing all these things to release tension. And you can do it once or twice again. But eventually, you will be ready. You'll be ready for the warm down. And we begin the warm down by stretching our legs outward. Now, I want you to deliberately turn your hips out and turn your hips in. And do that a couple of times. So you go out, hold it out for a moment. And in, hold it in for a moment. Okay, now the next time you go out, as you go out, tighten up your seat muscles. You'll feel it. And then release, turn your hips in and tighten up your seat muscles. You'll feel it, but it'll feel different. 
and release. Turn out and tighten up your seat muscles. Keep breathing, by the way. Relax and turn in and tighten the seat muscles. Maybe it's time for the inhale. Once again, turning out, tighten up your seat muscles. And release and turn in and tighten up those seat muscles. And release and as those legs relax, they're just gonna flop open. Pivot the pelvis, one side getting a little longer, the other side getting a little longer. You could add that onto the arms. You could add the arms into that and as you reach the right ankle away, you reach the right wrist away, the whole side of the body gets longer. You reach the left ankle away, you reach the left wrist away. We do side to side, full body shimmy. It's nice to be our full length. Take all those wrinkles out. And then we relax. We bring those arms so that they're uh, angled out from the chest about 45 degrees. The, the palms face the ceiling. I broaden the space between the shoulder blades. I turn my head side to side. I adjust the chin to the center. And I'm going to breathe deep of it. I'm going to make a soft fist. I'm going to bring it into my forearm and into my upper arm. I'm going to grip my toes down and bring it into the calf and into the full leg. I'm going to tighten up those seat muscles again. I'm going to press my shoulders down. I'm going to tighten my core and tighten my face and anything else I can get a hold of. I'm going to tighten as I take a deep inhale. Exhale, go limp, go soft. Like you just melted suddenly, just went limp. But there may be an area that didn't go limp. And you might need to do this again, full body. Inhale, hold the contraction. Exhale, go limp. Or you might need to switch over to just dealing with that one area that's being a little reluctant. Because letting go is really important. Letting go is something we sometimes don't know to do, especially when we've been in distress. We're still swimming in that fight or flight reaction. What being stressed makes it easier for us to be stressed again. So keep relaxing, keep letting go, keep breathing. That tightening and letting go is a signal to the body that you've done what you needed to do to protect yourself. You fought it. You flew away from it. You fight or flight. And it's over. So we need to let our body know it's over. It's okay. We can let go. We can relax. We're ready. And you can stay like this however long you want because you might be relaxing the first time in weeks. You can breathe deeply and begin a little bit of movement and stretching. I can tell you that all creatures stretch, including little puppies. So you stretch before you return to larger activities. You may have uh, remembered something that you want to talk to me about. You may have questions about this class. You have aches or pain. You might want to have a private conversation with me. You can have those. <laughs> you can talk to me. Call me by phone or text or email me. 